maybe that looks like uh, going to a dialysis center for our non medical friends who are enjoying the life in a better way already he has uh, uh, finished dating with the third or fourth of his uh, girlfriends or boyfriends and <coughs> he is ready for the fifth and you have not even started the first and you are worried about when to pass exam when will notification come will i pass or not so for others it may look pathetic but yes chronic illnesses patients get habituated for certain uh, change in their lifestyle so tell them instead of uh, adapting to that uh, lifestyle after complication develops why don't you change your lifestyle before complication develops go for walking stop smoking stop drinking excessively like uh, a uh, pig in the party and uh, stop uh, what you call uh, uh, eating as such you are going to die tomorrow without eating so you must uh, make him to basically get habituated to the lifestyle that's very important doctor so what are the alternatives to this hemodialysis which are available we have a continuous av hemodialysis continuous veno venous hemodialysis maybe that is beyond the purview of uh, undergraduate uh, knowledge but you can review it uh, by going back to the harrison now what are the main advantages of hemodialysis versus peritoneal dialysis this is what you need to know thoroughly hemo is more efficient than peritoneal dialysis and uh, nowadays we have dialyzers which are like the jet aeroplanes they are more efficient to suck out the blood purify it and push it back to you and uh, in emergency setting hemodialysis is good because you can quickly put a cath as an access catheter and then take out the blood and uh, purify and put it back so that's very easy to make an entry and uh, take out the blood purify and push it back but what is the disadvantage kidney will not work like a jet plane it will take its own time of 24 hours to produce 500 ml urine or 800 or 1000 ml urine but dialysis machine hemodialysis machine is doing it in 3 to 5 hours so that it is not the physiological way peritoneal dialysis will work more or less closely like the natural kidney and because you are taking out a large chunk of the blood from the body and then uh, putting it back they may suffer from severe hypotension severe hypoosmolality and in uh, hemodialysis units patient suddenly going into cardiac arrest is not an uncommon setting so you must be ready in a hemodialysis center any moment required to intubate the patient and resuscitate him all those uh, facilities must be available while running because you are taking out the blood of the body and then pushing it back right so whenever you take out a chunk of the blood from the body what is the normal body response to prevent hypotension it lead to vasoconstriction sympathetic outflow will increase prevents hypotension but uh, on whom are you doing dialysis in a patient of diabetes for example with a chronic kidney disease diabetic patients also will develop autonomic neuropathy and his sympathetic system may not respond when it is required so he may go into acute hypotension when you suck the blood out of his body so that's the whole challenge of managing a patient uh, with hemodialysis coming to peritoneal dialysis peritoneum acts like a dialysis membrane and the peritoneal capillaries will try to drain urea creatinine everything so what will you do in this doctor basically you have a dialysis fluid that fluid you will push it into the intra abdominal cavity into the peritoneum and it acts like an exchanging agent for sucking out all the urea creatinine out of the body and then you have a conduit which will bring out all the toxic containing fluid out of the body so that is the peritoneal dialysis so which kind of fluid do you want to use as a diselate it is a hyperosmolar solution like high glucose which is used 
and through the principle of osmosis it will suck all that urea creatinine and bring out from the body that is the main uh, function and every 4 to 8 hours it become replaced if you are putting patient on a CAPD continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis where he can carry with the peritoneal in peritoneal out with the fluid going in going out kind of a thing CAPD you will do it uh, like a permanent uh, process procedure for him so that he can be ambulatory in CAPD the diazolate is pushed into the peritoneal fluid via a implanted catheter and uh, in case of acute PD which you do whenever patient with renal failure comes you do not have hemodialysis facility right in them what will you do you will make a puncture and then pass a catheter into the peritoneum and then push the fluid into it ok doctor of course in the first couple of uh, peritoneal dialysis punctures you will end up in puncturing the bladder intestines vertebrae spinal cord whichever structure comes across your needle so you must be careful I mean uh, two to three times if you know and follow the principles of puncturing and above all use your intuition skills are different from knowledge skills are different from knowledge you may study 10, 10 indications of lumbar puncture unless you do lumbar puncture any amount of reading is obsolete you must get the gaping feeling when the needle is entering into it sex swimming and procedures in medicine reading is only for some anxiety relieving work but the actual thing is swimming should be done at that time if you use the knowledge of maybe my deltoid should work first rhomboid should work later and all that if you are using you will be sunk into the water so there are some natural things which should come out and unless you swim you can't uh, continuously swim so doctor as a house surgeon first day only you must be the first person to say let me do the lumbar puncture let me do the peritoneal dialysis let me do the catheterization let me do the intubation let me put the central line let me put the intercostal drainage tube everything should be let me do first otherwise you only keep watching others doing and you will be reading the book like a uh, religious nun who basically utters few principles so that you that should not happen okay doc but now until exam is over you must know what are all the indications for doing something so that you know even the decision making of when to do is important first once you know when to do how to do what to do how best to do how well to do how fast to do everything else but when to do indications is what you have to be very sure in theory huh? so now doctor what is the advantage of CAPD the patient can learn to perform the dialysis on their own and it is very closer to one's own kidney physiologically but the disadvantage of PD is all that hyperosmotic glucose which you are pushing can lead to hyperglycemia hypertriglyceridemia which can be the complication it can predispose to peritonitis and patient need to be very self motivated and uh, cosmetic reasons are also important if a CAPD is there if the fluid goes into peritoneum there can be increase in the abdominal girth which may not be acceptable in a social setting so patient must be motivated now what are the important limitations and complications of dialysis see what dialysis is doing is that excretory function of kidney but what is kidney kidney has some synthetic functions it makes creates vitamin D active form it causes erythropoietin production all that is not done by dialysis so that's the reason doctor the vitamin D deficiency anemia due to erythropoietin deficiency they all need to be thoroughly managed in spite of patient being on dialysis is what need to be remembered because of the hemodialysis there can be hypotension there is a very important entity called first use syndrome patient can develop severe chest pain back pain anaphylaxis whenever he is exposed to a new dialysis machine which is basically called first use syndrome and when you take out a lot of fluid from the body at the time of hemodialysis patient can go into disequilibrium 
which is called dialysis disequilibrium syndrome can develop patient can go into a severe vertigo whenever you happen to take out a lot of fluid hemorrhages and hematomas can occur because you are using heparin to prevent the clotting when the blood is passing through the dialysis machine infection can occur and anyone with a long term dialysis will develop amyloidosis because of the accumulation of the beta 2 microglobulin which is called dialysis related amyloidosis is what need to be understood if you do peritoneal dialysis what are the complications you will remember peritonitis and since you are increasing intra abdominal pressure by pushing the fluid that can precipitate a abdominal inval hernia hyperglycemia protein malnutrition all these things are very much possible so that's all the story of dialysis so tell me doctor five words to remember for the passing exam absolute emergent non emergent indications of dialysis complications of dialysis hemo versus peritoneal dialysis the differences and uh, <coughs> mainly the complications of each of the forms of the dialysis you must be ready to argue debate and write a long essay on the dialysis so shall we call it a day doctor uh, we still have another half an hour time uh how many of you don't have energy regular question of bornavita quiz uh, i mean bornavita program huh? our uh, students from guntur karnool they are all online are the exam date did the exam date come out not it no let's relax a little more and then uh, finish it uh, a little slowly okay so proteinuria hematuria are the two things we need to discuss or we'll just take a 2 minute break and finish then yes <clears throat> uh we missed yesterday's class uh positively we are thinking uh we are thinking of uh, probably next week onwards we will try to have uh, all the four days monday tuesday wednesday thursday medicine completed so today like, i just need another uh, 15 classes like this two hour sessions to finish entire medicine including clinical medicine okay so uh maybe from next uh, week onwards we will become more uh, aggressive uh, in our plan so thank you doctor